Yeah, fully ready. I was waiting here for two hours. You guys were like, Kirk, meet us here at 4.30. I was like, all right, check, I'll do you check, that. You check, you check the time, Kirk? I couldn't check the time. I was too busy being here. I was too busy being here, uh, being a diligent podcast co-host. I'm going to see if I can find it. Yeah, you try and find the receipts, but he I'll doesn't know it. that his pockets are wet. Property box. meet again for prop robotics episode 72 and uh yeah man we, we're, we're high up in the numbers i threw a random number out there i don't know what number uh episode like, this is it's like 70 something 69 this is episode 69 i'm sorry i can't help it i cannot help stuff like that no i can't blame you i can't blame you yeah, that's <laughs> a, that was a good demonstration for anyone wondering what 69 means <laughs> visual aid of Alan Massenburg able to help out on that one. Anything I can do to help. I'm here for the people. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. What you been up to, man? Yo, man, I've been chilling, man. Um, what have I been up to? This weekend, I've been helping my girl. She's been running this pop-up shop. And mm. been, you know what I mean? So I've been helping her run that joint for the weekend. Okay. Um, I haven't... I didn't do any... Oh! Uh -oh. I, I gotta... I, I, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about that later. Talk, this is going to be a 15 minute episode so <laughs> people don't know we're running short on time this is a so speed dating actually, the podcast okay, okay so this is what i this is what i did i want to talk you said you want to talk about this i want i, I want to talk about this indoor okay. indoor indoor shows we're doing the indoor sh uh, show segments let's uh, get In the indoor show segment music on uh, indoor so comedy show indoor comedy shows now you know your boy is not doing them your boy is staying away from them but on Sunday, Sunday, I just so happened to slide to a secret location indoor comedy show. Whoa! This Sunday that passed, just passed two days oh, ago. Damn! Was that your first time doing indoors? This this whole thing? My first. I didn't do anything. So this is what happened. This is what oh, happened. Okay. I heard about it. I just. I literally was five minutes away. So I walked over there, and um. Yeah, man, I stayed for like 10 minutes in the back with my mask on as I watched everyone frolic around carelessly. Frolickers, frolickers, yeah. Frolic around carelessly, unmasked, mm -mm -mm. no social distance. Some people, so I, I was staying in the back to myself watching the whole scene. And I told, I told my homie who I went, who I went to meet, I told him, I said, listen, you're going to turn around and I'm going to be gone. Like... <laughs> Oh. I was like, I'm gonna be out. I I, I felt uncomfortable, bro. I slid out. I, I left. I was I didn't I ain't, I said what's well, up to the people that I knew, and I got out of there. Damn, doing the right thing for the people, your friends and family. Yeah. That's cool. That's a did uh, so. I think we briefly discussed this, like, because um, I had an indoor run in this weekend as well. Um, yeah, no, it was just, it's getting wild out here, man. I went to a show on Saturday, the Phantom Power one. Uh, they had the Shane Gillis show, and I thought it was outdoors. So I was like, "Oh, all right, yeah, I'll come through." So I drive like 50 minutes out, and I'm like, "Oh, that's weird. There's no one here." Thought he'd be a bigger draw than this. Uh, I see no campfires and something like that. And so and now I must have heard him, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I I went uh, walked a little bit closer, and I was like, "Oh, I think it's indoors." So I'm like, "I'm already right here, 50 minute drive out." Um, I stayed for it. Stayed for it. I wore the mask the whole time because when you're seating or when you're sitting down, they tell you you could take the mask off. I didn't take the mask off. I didn't take the, I had a drink and I was literally like, like it's <laughs> a lot of it, you know, could be psychological and you have, they provide at least ventilation. It's like, and it was very cold in terms of the ventilation. So I was like, I kind of believe them on that part. But uh, yeah, that was first like indoor endeavor in a while i'd say over i think my internet's messing up kurt can can you see a pixelated movement on my yeah, end? i see you moving but it's, it's like lagging on I, I don't think it's my end you know i'm just sitting here i don't know what's going on i'm back though we back yeah, though. good we just jump back into it so what was the last thing you said about the indoor show you you yeah, said so, that so 
so I went to go see it. Um, felt I was separated from everyone. I was, yeah, they really do much to be honest, but like, um, they're like pseudo cellophane, um, clear sheets, like plastic sheets to kind of divide people, which I for effort like a, that's they've been doing it at barbershops um, and hair salons, and, yeah, exactly. Those, yeah, um. So that that was cool, and you know, coming up to I just because when I agreed to host, it was like, oh, because it's probably going to be outdoors, and then they just announced that it's indoors. So I'm like, but I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the right precautions. I'm going to mask up, double mask it, wear gloves, put like a, a cloth over the microphone, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to if you're going to do the indoor, you got to do that, especially if you're hosting. You have to. Keep your mask on and, and glove it up, man. That's all you can really do, you know. Um, I'm do more. I'm going to wear multiple jackets. I'm going to have sunglasses on. I don't know the science behind that one, but I feel like it will protect my eyes. I feel like people, they'd be wearing the, the, the whole... Sh- um, the little SWAT team. Yeah. Little, um, like <laughs> the, the pixel the, the Dennis, on the mask. The dentist be wearing that joint. Yeah, so it's like so you, you spit one fly and hit them. But like... um Damn, yeah, people, get one for sure. This is one thing. This is, so look, man. I am. I'm still I, going to this show. If it, it just it it scared me even more. Scared you? I was like, people eating, having drinks, and high five. People, pe- people laughing, ha ha ha. And I didn't feel comfortable. <laughs> look, people do people, laugh the like fir- that, bro. Look, the first thing you did when you walk into the show, they take they check your temperature, and then you sign the guest book. I'm Ooh. like, I'm like, you signing guest books right now? Like, Yo, give and, me another pen. Don't give. Don't just leave the pen there. That's everyone's touching that. You feel me? So it's just like yeah. I don't. I was like, man, I can't. Yeah, I, I'm a. I'm a. It's gonna be a long winter, man. It's gonna be a long winter. Yeah, this is me because I, I I went back and forth with this one because I I think we we touched on this too briefly. Like I've turned down shows for December because I was like, oh, I'm just gonna chill for December. Yeah. And then I've been presented with two opportunities. That's like oh, okay. Those are pretty cool. They seem worth it, um, and I've been I've been reassured by the bookers for both that it's like, all right, we're taking safety precautions. One's a steel stack, so it's like I know they're gonna, you know, they're gonna uh, be safe with what they do. Um, right. Yeah, I think it's a psychological barrier. Also, the numbers are rising too, though. So that was my uh, next point. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. <laughs> I, f- I feel you being either scared or worried for me. Am I telepathically correct on this one? So this is my thought process. This has been my thought process the whole time. I'm not doing any shows indoors unless the opportunity I can't turn down. So like, bro, if if like Mike Epps, like I got the host for Mike Epps, it was indoor, I'm indoors with it then. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm going to do it. So yeah. it's like, if it's something that I can't turn down, something I can't like, I gotta live with myself. You know what I mean? So like, I can't yeah. like. <laughs> so listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm. I want you to be safe. You know, I'm. I'm but if it's something you, you want to do and you thought about it, it's like, yo, I, I gotta do this. I think you should. So I'm not, cause I'm not a big fan of re- like regrets, which, uh, duh, who is? But I'm saying, but it's like, I believe that like, living life to the fullest, as long as you know, you should be safe. You know? Um. I can't say I'm going into a safe. I'm I'm scared. This is gonna be one scary set. <laughs> I performed on Halloween, and this is much scarier than that. Um, no, I, I think I, I kind of. What's up? I said you better not. You better not bomb, man. You it, you, <laughs> you gonna bomb? You can't risk it. You you gonna you gonna get the COVID. You better get standing up. <laughs> oh my gosh! How annoying would that be? <laughs> Just like, bomb and like audience members pat me on the back afterwards like well it took a lot of balls to get up there don't touch me audience member <laughs> damn yeah, grandma's in the crowd scared. grandma's in the crowd <laughs> pinchy in cheeks like oh baby it's gonna be okay <laughs> i'm like <laughs> i'm like grandma you should not be here right now um <laughs> we really you really shouldn't be i i i so i uh see it like this i see it like you know i go grocery shopping I'm in there for like 50 minutes to an hour. You know, your boy, you know, you see Texas Tom. Um, it's equivalent to that. I'm going to be indoor. There's going to be less people than there would be in a grocery store. Um, mind you, I am like handling the microphone, but 
if I'm going to use my Kirk tactics of like, I say Kirk tactics, but I stole it from Pat. I'm going to put a cloth over the microphone. Good move, Pat. I'm going to put a cloth over the microphone, double up on the gloves and we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. The microphone is like the, it's like the, the banana of the stage because yeah. the, because the banana air at the grocery store, everybody's touching them. So like, it's, it's the same thing. Like you're just touching the banana, telling some jokes into it. You know what I mean? Grocery store you going to, dog? <laughs> <laughs> that's like the to... staple of a grocery store where people are just touching fruit, and that's what it's going <laughs> for. Welcome to White Ones. Because you, you, I was talking to producer Pat about it. I go to I go to the White Giant where they got all the vegetables at. <laughs> that's uh, where I go. That's my shop at. You uh, shop in the hood. Ain't no look. Producer Pat say you shop in the hood. Ain't no arugula. <laughs> <laughs> Did Pat say that? Pat did not say that. Oh, he said it in your. I was like, really? That's that sounds like an Allen statement right there. <laughs> no, he said that. <laughs> I'm serious. He said that. Damn. Listen, Allen. Listen, <laughs> we gotta get down to business. We're on. We're on short time right now. Um, you know, the people they they were they want to check out property bonics. They want to see our face. They want to see the wardrobe. Um, but get they also the drug wanna, rug on. Is that what these are called? It's called a drug rug. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just ruined your day or something. Oh, you know, it's, it's, why? Why do they call it that? That's weird. Because all the hippies used to wear them. I got this at like a Marshalls. I got this yeah. as a gift. I got it from right. a former Honey Dip. I got me this on my birthday. Yeah, Honey Dip thinks you do coke. What? <laughs> uh, former Honey Dip. If you're listening to this right now, uh, your assessment was incorrect. If that's what you thought. Uh, but if your assessment was, yo, Kirk would look fly in this, you correct, you correct, you correct. Listen, man, it looks good on you. I ain't going Thanks, homie. Thanks, homie. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And that's, you know, they they mainly come here to like see us and all that stuff, to hear our words. But, you know, they want some suggestions as well. They they want some they do, recommendations. They be, be wanting them. They do. They do. And uh, with that, uh, we're going to do some proper suggestions. Proper suggestions. Proper suggestions. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is a very uh since, I, since I'm going first, this is a very uh I don't know the word. I wanna know like a suggestion that's only for a specific area. Is there a word for that? Like regional? This is a, this is a regional suggestion. Nice. Anybody that's anybody that's in uh New York City, I rec I, I suggest and recommend um I suggest you recommend that you go check out my girlfriend's pop up shop in Brooklyn. It's mm. it's a pop up shop that she's running. It's um twenty plus different black owned businesses. You got uh, candles, clothing, jewelry, all kinds of stuff. Mass hysterical apparel's in there. You got all kinds of things. Mm. You check it out. It's uh you gotta go go to her Instagram page for all the information at the Cultural Collective on Instagram. The Cultural Collective. I suggest you guys go there at seven twenty seven Franklin Avenue in Brooklyn. I mean it's it's dope. It's gonna be there all until Christmas Eve. That's so bad right there. I was I happened to be on Culture Collective earlier in the day and I saw some fine earrings. So if you're a honey dip right now, look up some fine earrings. Culture Collective. Culture Collective. Highly recommend it. Highly it's, recommend yo, you know what? Don't, they don't have they don't have um drug rugs, but they do got rugs. And when I'm there, you can get the other thing. But they, they got uh no, I don't no, I don't do those things not anymore. But um they, they do have they do have rugs, they have um vases. It you can get you get a nice little mask on. It's, it's dope. It's a lot of stuff. It's, it's pretty cool, man. Mm, very, very nice. Very, very nice. Supporting the black business yes. and getting earrings. It's me very nice. I wish. <laughs> so all your honey dips, you can get. You can get some jewelry from from uh for your honey dips. Yeah, if you're a honey dip yourself, you know, treat yourself. You know, it's Friday. You're getting paid. Treat yourself don't, some nice earrings. Don't cheat yourself, baby. Treat yourself. Mm, 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 mm. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, my, my prop suggestion um, I was going to give a book one but I don't want to be a nerd I don't want to be a nerd and give a book one not only book nerds one. read Kurt <laughs> no I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a book one um, <laughs> I, I, my prop suggestion is to go back to some of the classics that you did not have to read in high school um, I, I never had to read uh, I maybe mispronounced it the, the Metamorphosis uh, by Kafka uh, it's this, have you heard of this before you ever had to read this in school no I had a bunch you of talking about high school. Yeah, it's like a short story, like mm. fifty pages or so. It's it's cool. Like it's it's so pretty much this dude. He's like a salesman, 
and his family, they're on kind of the poor side, but they're doing okay, mainly due to his sales job. He comes home, and then overnight, he becomes uh, an insect, becomes a bug, um, inexplicably. Like, there's no explanation behind it. He just becomes a bug. And then the whole story is pretty much how his family treats him um, afterward, how he treats himself. Um, and it's very short, um, and it's what can consider one of the classic reads. It was all right. I, I, I wasn't thrilled about it but i do recommend people going back and reading some of the stuff that uh you may have not been required to in high school that's a that's a good that's a good thing actually because in, in, when i was in high school um i didn't realize until, until i became an adult i've never read a book from start to finish oh. not that's even like, I, like the little critter ones like yeah i guess whatever but like, i'm talking like high oh. school enough like probably even like middle school, like I never like book reports and shit. Like I would always like finagle my way through it and just pass. But like spark notes, yeah. Like I just never. So I think that's a good that's a good suggestion to go back and to read and stuff that they recommended in high school. Like mm. real. yeah, definitely yeah. recommend that one. And speaking of like you you mentioned candles, it's something that like caught my attention that I don't, I, I'm still not fully sure how I feel about it yet. The boy Drizzy Drake. He has a candle that smells like him. It's scented like Drake. Have you heard of this? Not good. It's not, not good. good. Okay. It's, what? Because you don't like the smell of Drake? No, like he smells good. Okay, so Erica Badu had one that Ooh. came out that smelled like her vagina, and she called it the Badusi, right? That's what I'm talking about. Sold off the shelves. Oh. So when I first hear a Drake selling one, I automatically think of what is it going to smell like? Is it going to smell like Drake's Badusi? Like, is it going to smell like Drake's paint? Like, like. Hmm. I didn't read the description or the back of the candle. I don't know if it's supposed to be like, "Here's my penis, I'm Drake, y'all." Like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything like that. I fig, I picture it uh, smelling like rose water and champagne that's been left out overnight. If if that's how you think Drake smells, then that's what the candle's going to smell like. That's he, he is going to have a scent that that smells like him, bro. So. Yeah, yo, Drake. We're, honestly, we're rooting for you. Like, we want you to smell good and all that stuff. And it's kind of a unique idea to put it in a candle. Um, I think that'd be a cool song, actually. Put it in a candle. But I don't know. Like, that's like, <laughs> you know, if anyone's listening to this right now, like, put it Got in a candle. Got my balls in the candle. Got my balls in the candle. <laughs> Hot wax on my hands. Hot wax on my hands. <laughs> he did the T Pain part. Um, damn, I'd get a candle myself. You were gonna, I, I'm cool. I, I don't need to. I don't want my rim smelling like me. Like, it's just so weird. Like, <laughs> hey, come on, baby, bring your girl over. She's like, what is that? It's not like you didn't take a shower today. Like, what? Nah, man. That's <laughs> All like, over your house, it stinks. Yeah, picture that being like that's like the ultimate gift for a loved one, or maybe not like one that lives with you, but like a loved one that lives away from you. Like, say, like if you go to your mom's, it's been a while, pandemic times, haven't been able to see them. You break them off with a candle that smells like you. That's like one step below a hologram right there. Oh, so 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 say someone someone passes away and they got their candles, they got their candles still. You're just gonna light them on fire all the time? No, man. You can be lighting people on no. I'm not gonna like light you, all the time, but you know, sometimes just if I want to remember them. Or you could have a candle that talks, so when you light it, it'll be talking to you. <laughs> you don't say that. <laughs> that's that's too lit. That's too lit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's lit. You that's, know what I mean? Like <laughs> you might be all but if you on some camera and talk to you, just be you're sitting there swaying with the with the <laughs> the wind. You know how the candle flame be moving. Damn! Listen, uh, we're gonna attack Shark Tank you. on this one. That's kind of that's a hot idea right there. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're describing a ghost. I think that's what you're talking about right now. That's uh, I want my candle to speak Russian. I want so I just wanted to speak ex- exclusively Russian. That way I could help and you know learn l- Russian while smelling myself. <laughs> Damn, that was pretty good Russian. That was pretty good <laughs> contextual clues to get Russian. But that's that's the stuff right there. Yeah, so you know if if you're listening to this right now, sort of thing, you know, uh, just know that Drake does have uh, some items out there that you can get if you want to smell uh, your house to smell like him and all that. Something else I, I've been noticing a lot this week in particular that, um, and we're gonna do a little bit of celebrity news. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uproar in terms of money, potentially, uh, particularly rappers and how they're using their money. Um, yeah. I think we saw that with two uh, rappers, uh, Cardi B and Meek Mill. 
Um, do you know about the Meek Mill situation? Yeah, the Meek Mill situation. Um, I guess there's been like this thing, this rumblings on the internet recently about oh, these nice. the, these water boys, these squeegee boys from Atlanta that run up on your car trying to wash your windows or run up on your car trying to sell you things like water. And they've been like I, the rumblings that I've been that I've been reading. Right, it seems like these guys are very like enthusiastic. They're like trying to get as money as much as they can. They're hungry and they're just out there trying to get their money. You know what I mean? And so I, I, that's what I, that's that's the backstory. So a couple of days ago, Meek Mill is in Atlanta and he pulls up on these guys selling water, and he uh, he's recording it for some reason. He's recording this this interaction, oh. and he 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 bought a water from them and he gave the it was like six to eight kids he gave them twenty gave them a twenty dollar bill, oh. and he, and he said y'all split that, and then posted the video. And every he had this whole backlash because everybody was like, he had some people saying he should have gave them more than that. You told you, you told eight kids to split twenty dollars. Meek, you being cheap, you got more money than that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and then you had, and then you had the people like me, right? Who kind of was like, when it comes to what Meek actually did, right? Aside from the video, when it comes to Meek pulling up to these kids, buying the water, and giving them twenty dollars, I see nothing. I don't see anything wrong with that. Like I don't. How much? So how? So how much? You you tell us how much he's supposed to get. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. you can't tell somebody what to do with their money. You know what I mean? So like yeah. Well, we saw the exact same thing with the Cardi B thing because she was posting about um wanting to get like a bag or boots, like Gucci yeah. boots or something like that. And people were like, "How could you be posting this during the pandemic?" And it's like I, I get where people are coming from of like, oh well, you have the means, or oh you're kind of putting it in our face. But that's, they're not really putting it on our face. Like, I didn't know the Meek Mill story because I don't, I'm not, I don't follow Meek Mill like that. Right. I kind of know the Cardi B story because I've heard people talk about it. But if you're not on their page, you don't have to worry about those things. Um, I think it's kind of an entitlement thing to be like, oh, you know, tell someone else um, who used to be poor as well. Like, hey, this is how you spend your money. Right. Um, I, I don't think that's right. It's kind of annoying. It's it's funny you say because you didn't know about the Meek thing because you know his page. I had no idea about the Cardi thing because I'm blocked. Like I had no. Oh, idea. that's right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, we. I forgot that that's a casualty of one of your roasts. Yeah. Uh, I forgot. I I can't see that. But but like another like you can't. Cardi's hella rich, dog. Like we're not. This is the facts about it. She's going to buy things that we can't. If it's a pandemic or not, like. Yeah. It's hers. You can't tell her what to do with her money. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I will you know? say with the Meek Mill thing, do why? You know, I wonder why he recorded it. Not that it matters. Like, it's still the point where he could do whatever he wants. And also, you know, I'll get to that point a bit. But why did he explain why he was recording? Was he just being like a dork about it? The caption, like the caption on the video, it said "ATL runs." Like R U N T S runs. Like, right. So it, it, it kind of. I think he should. He, he shouldn't have recorded it. Yeah. He all this backlash he's getting, it came directly from himself because he recorded it and he posted it. So it's like yeah. he, he shouldn't have done that. I I don't I don't know. I think his 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 I think the reason behind him giving the money seemed kind of misguided because of the video. Yeah, the whole like uh giving money while recording thing it doesn't sit well. Um however it's like, you know, these kids who knows how much they're getting on a regular basis from your average driver. So for them to like, oh, okay, well, you know, I get Meek Mill and here's $20, uh, whereas normally it'd be like two, $3. Right. And to just one person, they wouldn't even be like split it. Um, who knows? Maybe Meek Mill had their interest in mind of like, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, here's a, you were working hard. So here's $20. Here's a very realistic um, income for uh, what you're doing uh, instead of giving them $1,000. I don't know. We gotta we gotta ask me. I think I think that his, like I said, what he actually did outside of the video, I'm fine with. Like I'm I'm fine with him going up to them, giving them twenty dollars. I'm I have no problem with that. My I just didn't like the fact that he posted. I hate with anybody post any any kind of shit like that. Like yeah. I've said it numerous times. I do not post when I do charity because that's that just seems like it's misguided. And I don't I don't do charity, so it's kind of like. But when, when people post that shit, it's kind of like, why are you really doing this? You know what I mean? Like, you do, who are you doing this for? You yeah, it's, I mean? per, like, it's performative nature. Um, I read somewhere, like, someone had this stance of, like, any form of activism has a performative element to it. And I was like, 
kind of true, kind of true. Um, I think just by declaring yourself as an activist in itself is kind of self-serving. Not to say that it's a bad thing, but um, it you definitely are doing, I shouldn't say definitely are, but it, it can seem that it's a, much of it is uh, you're putting self in consideration sometimes ahead of what you're uh, doing charity for. Uh, no, so. yeah. No, it's not, it's hundred percent right. That's why, like oh, I said, yeah. you won't, you, I don't, I don't talk about nothing I do. I always donate. When giant be like, donate the extra change. I'll be like, yes, yes, yes. White giant. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing toys for tots? You going to drop some tots and toys? I be doing it all the time. Like oh. every, cause I got, I got kids. So like, they always got toys they don't use. You know what I'm saying? So like, and I'm always trying to get rid of stuff. I'm always donating all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? But like, I don't, I don't, post it or like talk about it. just do it like it just I, it's just so weird to me like i see people at like a homeless shelter like yo we feed no homeless people it's like a, it's like a ussy yeah. well you know you're taking an ussy but they ain't got no teeth they like whoa <laughs> like it's just like <laughs> take an ussy i've never heard that an ussy <laughs> i didn't make that up i didn't make that up uh, it's, that's funny that's funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I that's it's kind of in the same vein of like when people share the i voted stickers oh uh, or i'm like i get it it's like promoting the idea of democracy and all that but it's like it's it's nauseating you know it's, you don't see it as much now sort of thing because election's over or is it it's over um <laughs> it's, over, it's over for sure right they have to do like some runoff thing um and i think their trump's plan is to bring it to the supreme court yeah. Um, but they haven't really declared much um, evidence. And the AG general, uh, William Barr, who's been like his dude, like his right-hand man for like most of the, 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 his term, he's flat out come out and said, yeah, so we did some investigative research and there's no blatant, or there's no uh, evidence of uh, voter fraud on a national scale. So even if there's like a little bit here and there for whatever issues that may happen it's not enough to like sway the results so that's kind of the last update that i've heard on it right okay. yeah so that's, that, that, that works for me because you know you get that black that black lady and that and that i'm that black and indian lady now i know how you get <laughs> i know how y'all get <laughs> you black so, and indian people <laughs> juan carlos had to set you straight <laughs> juan carlos listen juan carlos ain't set nobody straight okay I, we from africa all <laughs> you Dominican, you from Africa. Yeah, Juan Carlos, we're going to have you back on. You hear all he's saying right now. Yeah, so you're talking about races, you're talking about cultures. It's a different right. thing. I don't want to go, I don't want to go into it. I'm, <laughs> pro I'm proud to be black. I don't know about everybody else. So that's all I'm going to say. Well, I, I'm going to leave the subject in a bit too, but that's not to say I'm not proud to be black. That's not, I'm, I'm just saying I'm also uh, have uh, pride in my other elements of self. Yeah. As you should, as you should. I've seen that uh, Janae Aiko. Yeah. R&B singer, girlfriend of Big Sean. Lovely. She Lovely. she put a post out saying on Twitter, she's not gonna say nigga no more because oh. she did her she did her ancestry.com joint, and she only like thirteen percent black. She like thirteen percent thirteen percent Nigerian. She's most she's like thirty percent Japanese. She's like fourteen percent German. It's just it looks like a whole across the board. You know what I mean? Damn, that's kind of cool for her to decide though. That's she's like, so I'm not saying the N word no more. I don't deserve to. <laughs> That's why she took the test. I was like, hey, can I say this? It's starting to feel weird when I say this. Oh, Sean, can I say this? <laughs> she was like, nigga, no. <laughs> Damn. She's beautiful. Yeah, She's she beautiful. Is. Yeah. If, if we're doing a segment on goals, my goal is to, you know, perhaps one day, one day meet her and, you know, do a little serenation. And by that, serenation? I mean, Serenation? You, know, you sing to her? No, no, like I'll do magic tricks or something like that. But like I'll, I'll you know, there's different methods. She's got the singing and all that stuff. But like, you I'm sure the finer things in life, like taking nice walks and walking endlessly until you find a library. You gonna do a set for her? I'm not gonna do my <laughs> set for her. I'm not gonna do my set for her. I'm gonna invite her to the show, and if she, you know, she's there, then she could witness the magic or whatever. But like, you know. Yeah. So I don't know if you're talking about real magic or like the magic you're going to do for her. No, I'm talking about real magic. I'm talking about real magic. Like she's gonna pick a card, and that card's gonna end up in her pocket. Like that's gonna. Like, <laughs> and then you're gonna end up in her pants. Hey. hey. <laughs> only if you're okay with it, though. Only if you're okay with it. And only if I'm okay with it. It's a it's two to tango, and we both have to be on the same wavelengths. Two to tango. Speaking of two to tango, two people are gonna be tangoing in February. 
Ooh. We got because uh, you know that the, the fights just went off. Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, and then you had um, the Paul dude knocked out Nate Robinson. Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson, and we're short on time, so I'm gonna not voice my air my grievances with how people reacted to the Nate Robinson situation. Wait, please, I need you. To, I need to hear your your thoughts on that. I thought it was wrong. I thought it was wrong. <laughs> I thought it was wrong. I get that it's about a boxing match and that's kind of the nature of it. But can you go on Nate Robinson's page and see him dribbling basketball with his 13 year old son, his son that looks up to him and then know that that 13 year old son who has to use the internet cause he's working from home and doing school from home, see his dad get played left and right, right and left, down and up, up and down. Listen, listen, hey, listen. This, this is what it is, right? I don't think nothing was wrong about it. He deserves to see his dad get made fun of, okay? Because it, that's what happened. It wasn't like something was made up. You talk trash. You said, I'm doing this for my people and for the culture. And then you got put to sleep embarrassedly. I don't think that's a word, but embarrassedly. It, it, it was bad. It looked, it looked bad. He, it wasn't like he just got beat up and he went to sleep. This, the fall, he was like, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, that's the, it was a, a bit a, a bit much. I, I don't know if it was a matter of he didn't train enough, or also the dude's like much larger too. I just I just never, I, I never got down with that. Never got down with it. There's a word for it when embarrassingly the the in terms of like finding joy off other people's embarrassment and, dis, and misfortunes. I think it's like I'm I'm gonna mispronounce this like a Sherrod Freud. Not how you pronounce it. If you're listening to this right now, please correct Kirk on that one. Um, but that it's pretty much sums up whenever we get joy off other people's uh, misfortunes. I don't think that's right. So I got a Sheroida for it. Sheroida for it? Oh. I got a Sheroida for it because I got a I got a pleasure out of it. This the this is why I don't feel bad though because what? Nate Robinson himself um, got pleasure out of it. He was making jokes himself. It was a bad look, man. It was like that wasn't normal. That's not how you normally get knocked out. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. It was a bad look. It looked funny how he went to sleep. And he, he made jokes about it until he laughed. So if he can laugh at himself, so can we. I feel like he's in that situation where he's forced to laugh. He's like, uh, you know, it's like when, say, you're like in a situation where, like, your boss makes a joke at your expense and everyone's laughing. And it's like, oh, man, I want to go in the bathroom and cry. But everyone's laughing. So I got to, like, pretend to be, like, a good sport about this. But really, I'm going to talk to my therapist about it later. I think that's what Nate Robinson's going through right now. Right now, like I, I, just, I, I don't approve of that. No, nah, I, I think I think he's fine. I think he, I think he'll bounce back. You know what I mean? I don't think that. Mm-mm. You know, I don't think he'll bounce back round two. No, because I knew you were doing a pun with the bounce back of him dropping off. Yes, and that's what I'm disagreeing with. Yeah, I think he'll emotionally bounce back. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. But look, but so the next fight they got coming up though, you got Floyd Mayweather stepping back in the ring. Yeah. Versus yeah. the other Paul guy. So his older brother, uh, Logan Paul. I didn't realize these two are this big in boxing. Apparently, like they've been doing it for a while. Um, and Mike Tyson, they he credited the the brothers of like, hey, these YouTube stars, they've made boxing popular again. Otherwise, this wouldn't be on the same level that it is right now. Um, so credit to them on that way. It's just, is this does this hurt boxing for the, one of the greatest of all times, like Floyd Mayweather, to get in the ring with a YouTube boxer? Um, I think it'll only hurt it if he loses. I don't think that like. Don't even say that. How crazy would that be? At this at that this be, point, that would be so <laughs> sad. At, listen, at this point, we I think we all know what's going on. It's Floyd's career is over. It's the pandemic. It's a money grab. We have nothing else to do. It's not normal, right? It's not normal times. You know what I'm saying? So it's, that'd be like Muhammad Ali fighting like I don't Elvis or some shit. Like I don't know. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that, that wouldn't <laughs> that wouldn't happen. That wouldn't, but but now Elvis can Elvis and Muhammad Ali can fight now because mm-hmm. of the times that we're in. So I think it's a little different. So but yeah. if he loses though, if he loses though, then we that'd be crazy. My my estimation, I haven't seen the dude uh, the Logan Paul guy fight, um, but Floyd is a defensive fighter. I think he's gonna tire the Logan dude out for the first three rounds, and then he's gonna go for rip shots after that. And I think he's gonna try to go for some form of knockout if it's allowed. Yeah, I, th- I think he's gonna try to knock him out regardless, mm. allowed or not. Yeah, because you can, because he's gonna try to knock Floyd out. Yep, yeah. he's yeah, gonna he's, try to win that. He's gonna try to win. That'd be a sad one. That'd be kind of a bummer, man. I'm not even into boxing like that, but that would just be 
that would be I'd be more sad over that than the whole Nate Robinson thing. No, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna happen. So he's gonna he has to first of all he has to avenge Nate Robinson. He got to avenge <laughs> the, the loss of that that loss because that was bad. That's probably the only reason he's doing this. He's like, okay, we gotta come back after this, and I'm the, I'm the only person that can do this the right the right way. <laughs> like, damn, no. the 2020 has been rough on um, black fighters. First, we had the Tyrone Woodley with the Kobe Covington earlier in, in September or October. Now this for Nate Robinson. Floyd, you got to win this one. You got to win this one. Just try. Do the I thing you do. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd's, Floyd's going to be all right. Like he, Floyd's the kind of guy that uh, he, he can't. He can't. He's professional professionals in their prime can't hit Floyd. You think this guy's going to be able to hit Floyd? You know what I mean? No. Oh. No, it, it ain't, it ain't going to happen, man. It ain't going to happen. Speaking of hitting, um, I'm about to hit up the UFC 4 uh, online uh, world championship rounds. Uh, your boy is currently the active champion in the light heavyweight division, Division 3. Um, so I'm going to defend that title against a few strangers. I know you said you had to, you had to cook later. I want Let's would keep you, this a short one. Would you do UFC in real life? No, I think it'd be cool to have some sort of martial arts, though. I think that's something I play around with. Like, I don't know if it would, like, a producer Pat does, like, jujitsu. I have a few friends yeah. that do jujitsu. I don't know if I'm, like, a Muay Thai type dude, though. I feel like a kick. Is that the one with the, with the Wing Chun dummy? I mean, when I'm doing this, there's going to be no dummy. It's going to be all precision. But yeah, it probably is that one. Um, they're, they're, they're like, they, like, fight this wooden dummy standing like, Chow! That's like all of them. That's like that's whenever they have those like setups where you're supposed to fight the resistance and things that pop up. Yeah. Um, so that could be like just kickboxing too. I think you know, Tony Ferguson. Uh, okay. Shout out to the uh, former uh, lightweight champion of the UFC, uh, Tony Ferguson, who was fighting this weekend, I believe. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Muay Thai. I think I always like when I get excited, I do kicks for one day. I'm going to overextend my knee. But I like to do a lot of kicks. Um, I kicked on stage the other day. I was like, all right. Oh, I was feeling myself. Oh. <laughs> was, that a, was that a new bit? <laughs> no, it wasn't even part of the bit. It was just like, all right. Like what I said there. <laughs> that could be your new thing. <laughs> Maybe. I'm pretty sure it derailed what the momentum that I had. They're like, ha-ha, why did he kick? <laughs> that was weird. Is he going to go into like a new bit with that one? Nope. <laughs> Same bit. <laughs> just ignore it. And I'm not going to even talk about it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly what I do. What, if we didn't schedule this for today and we almost missed this, dude, my fault. I'll, I'll take accountability. No, listen, I checked, I checked the receipts and we scheduled this, <laughs> this, we che- we scheduled this um, recording for Tuesday evening. We never set a time. We all were just like, okay, Tuesday evening. Yeah. <laughs> there was no I, set time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I assume 630. Um, that's all good. We got one of these in. Um, I was going to go to the Royce for one, the, the Soul Jules, the, I don't I may be popping off too much, bro. I may be doing too much. Is that tonight? I think it's on Tuesdays. Yeah. I haven't been to any of them yet, but if it, he has, it, started, it, started, it started at eight. I don't know. I assume it started like at seven, like normal open mic times. Are you going to, you should go. Oh yeah. I guess it's seven nine. I may actually do that. Yeah. I don't, yeah. You should probably hit that up, man. Get that, get that five minutes you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. They, I don't know. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'll be in Millersville, December twelfth. Uh, this isn't gonna come out until after that, so you know, just know your boy was stunting. Um, and I'll be at uh, the Music Fest Cafe uh, opening for Adam Yenser uh, on the twentieth of December on a Sunday. That one's gonna be a cool one. Dope, dope, dope. I don't have nothing coming up. I'm on ice. That's what's I'm up. on ice, man. I, cool. I ain't doing no indoor. Somebody hit me up. I appreciate y'all for hitting me up if you do, but I gotta thankful. I gotta decline them, Jones. Man, I'm I'm terrified. That shit. That shit I seen on Sunday freaked me the hell out. Yeah. I was like, oh hell no! It was people that didn't. It's not even like people had their masks down. They just didn't own masks. <laughs> yeah. I think people. It's funny to think the comfort level other people have, because for some people it's just like you could tell like there's no fear, and I'm not even doing saying that to judge them. Excuse me. It's just I I can't comprehend it. For me, I'm just like ah. But yeah. who, who knows? Maybe maybe we're sheep. What if you and I are sheep? I'd rather be in a live sheep than a dead fool. Okay. Mm. True. True. I, yeah. I'm cool. Like, I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna sheep it out. I got people that look up. <laughs> that I gotta keep, keep safe and healthy. I can't. Nah, most definitely, man. You're doing yeah. the right thing. Uh, hopefully, I'm doing the right thing too. I, I and you're know. good. You're good. As long as you. 
like I said, you don't have kids and stuff, man. I think that you need to. If I listen, if I didn't have kids, I'd have had coronavirus already. I would. Don't put that on me. Don't put that on. Me. You don't have kids. You can get it. No, I'm trying to avoid this thing by all means. <laughs> you know what, I, I you know what I'm saying, though. I'm not saying you you should go get it. I'm telling you how, how I live and how I'm crazy. No. So like, I know how. Listen, you do well though. You do very well. I've seen you in spaces where everybody is being careless and you're very safe. You gotta keep your mask on, keep your gloves on. You're smart. Yeah, I don't think you're. I think you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, you know, fashion choice gloves. But, you know, we'll see. We'll report back. We'll report back. Um, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Peace.